up in the box, baseball fans. Welcome back to another episode of Brett and John. What's happened Saturday night, John? I'm doing well here in the great state of Indiana, where it is still winter, although we got daylight savings time coming. Don't forget to set your clocks forward an hour tonight. Grass is already growing. I was going to tell you, I almost cut my lawn today. No, I'm just kidding. It's getting there. It's coming. But we got a guest tonight. That is why we're all here. We've got none other than the OG himself, Josh from KC Card Connection, coming to us live from his basement. How are you doing tonight, Josh? Good, guys. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Been looking forward to this for, uh, I think, a long time now. So it, this, has been a, this has been a long time coming. I feel like we should have had you on as a guest <laughs> months ago. Probably you guys year. try to. My schedule is just <laughs> whack, so it's kind of tough. So, all right. Well, we got we a lot of to- glad we're making it happen, Brett. We got a lot of topics. Why don't you lead us off? Yeah, we're glad you could be in here, Josh. We'll have you some personal questions in a little bit. So, if you're in the chat. If you want to know anything from KC, hit the chat. However, we're not starting with baseball again tonight. We're going with the hockey craziness. This is insane. One million dollar bounty from David Adams. Connor Bedard, Upper Deck Series 2. The bots are buying all the tins, all the megas, all the blasters. And Josh got a box. What do you think, Josh? I think it's fun. Um, I don't know much about hockey. Uh, I did open some a couple years ago, some hobbies when I first got into it, thanks to my buddy Herms. But um, I've opened a few boxes, no Bedards, but it's definitely... Retail is a fun way to go. It's cheap compared to the hobbies. How about you, John? Uh, you know, I didn't buy any of it yet. Uh, I wasn't necessarily – I mean, I could have got some blasters, I think, on Target. The tins, like you said, they disappeared pretty quick. The megas disappeared pretty quick. But I'm, I'm got to believe there's a lot of this still printed that's still coming. It's coming in waves. There will probably be some chance to get it at some point. Hopefully, if you're into it, you don't have to wait uh, too long before the one of one is pulled and the million dollar bounty is redeemed. Because I guess that's in every product, from what I can tell. It, there's a chances are out there for. No, it's only everything. in the hobby. It's only in hobby. Okay, okay. Hobby only, and I, I don't think the hype is even from that because that came out kind of late. I think the hype was well before that bounty. I don't think that may help draw some people, but I think there was just a huge hype just based on Bedard alone. Yeah. Well, I know it's hard to hit him because not only do you have to get a young guns, but there's so many in the checklist. So from what I understand, if you open up a case of hobby, you're going to get about one and a half to two Bedards in a case. So I don't, I don't know that that pays for your case necessarily at the current price. So if it's kind of Bedard or bust, uh, it doesn't feel like you're doing all that well, but again, I, I think it's fun to have a new sport that people want to chase uh, I would bring up another topic of speaking of new sports to chase, but we'll go there much later. We will go there much, much later. I tell you what, man, uh, I've, I've been in a group that was used to be primarily hockey, the clubhouse. Um, he's actually out of Kansas city. Uh, Josh, I don't know if you know, Mike called the clubhouse. He's, he's a breaker. He's been a breaker a long time. He started as only hockey. And, man, the hockey dudes are insane. And these young that guns the, are very collectible. That may be the guy that the does prices, the shows around here? He really, he just he only breaks online. He doesn't do any shows. He's, okay, I didn't know. Okay. He, he literally breaks out of his house. He's, he's got a huge following. He's been around. He's one of the very first breakers. Like, he's been doing it from the beginning. And he's been a big hockey guy his whole – career and i don't underestimate hockey i've never really i've opened a couple hockey products and those young guns are i would like to know the print run on a base young gun of bedard if somebody i'm sure somebody has it out there uh, does the box have odds on it josh dude they are tough. i am tough not goals. sure i don't know if it They're, had odds on it i could i mean i don't know that i'd do it right now but i no, no i don't think they have odds on the box. Um, That'd be a good I mean, video to do. I mean, they, I mean, you know how many, like, out of this, you're supposed to get one young gun. Mm-hmm. Um, you can get two. And then, like, the 
the megas are you get two the tens you get three and then the hobbies you get six um so i don't know that you could i guess you would have to figure out like the numbered cards from hobby that are exclusive then i guess you could figure out a print run by there yep but i have not done that because i'm just a bandwagon fan right now having fun on the hype I think it's. Pro- I mean, I gotta believe the young guns popular uh, population is higher than we think it is. It's it's not probably a hundred cards. It's probably in the thousands. Oh, oh yeah, oh, yeah. It's, it's many yeah. cards. Oh yeah, it's a, it's many, a many it's thousands. It's thousands, but it's got, it's got to be in. I mean, at least probably. Yeah, I'm interested to see the first PSA days. ten where that goes for. I'm assuming it should go for a premium because I'm pretty sure the quality on those upper decks is not the greatest. My buddy Herms, he already pulled two from his case and both will not gem. Mm. Um, so yeah, the no borders things on the hockey cards, which is typical of upper deck makes it a yep. little bit tough. Yeah. The to- edge chipping and whatnot. And one of his was perfect, yep. but it had a chunk of glue on the back. So, Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I will say this. Everybody and their brother is opening them. They are selling out immediately. I went on a run yesterday, hit five places. Sold out at all of them. They all stocked yesterday. The bots are buying every single box off of Target. They're going live. They're being bought. I have a uh, acquaintance locally that has one of the best bots that you can get. And literally, he's bought in thousands of boxes. It's insane. It's insane. So uh, another dude in my area who's broken online, hasn't broken for a year. Next thing you know, he's doing breaks of hockey this week so he's come out of the rat hole to <laughs> break hockey to make some money it's insane man there's even people in here that they're opening comments people are buying it's pro i don't know i don't i was trying to think before we came on what has been the most recent product of anything that's been this hot maybe the tom brady chase maybe maybe that but that was so expensive it was Wendy. The, the Wemby, that, that could be yeah. a good one. Yeah, I mean, I pulled a, I pulled an ice off camera. I sold that in a nine. I got a pretty de- decent chunk of change for that. Um, you know, I was pretty happy with my sale overall. I wish I would have got the 10 because it would have been worth over a thousand. But <laughs> Casey, why don't you show off the, uh, you want to wait on that or you want to show it off now? Show off what? What am I showing off? What you showed us earlier. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got my latest PSA reveal. And I was totally shocked. If you haven't seen the video, I was genuinely shocked. The home failure bandage from 22. I feel like the 23, I've seen a lot better gem rate of people doing those. But yeah. yeah. Uh, I got a 10 on a Julio HFA. And that, I was shocked. Part. That is so a big I, I think the biggest difference, as I even said in my video, was the back was super clean. Yeah. Um, on those, I submitted a Bobby and a Julio before they got an eight and a seven. And then the Ooh. backs, they're not like torn up, but they're not in great condition. So I almost think they look at that more. So I, I have, I'm the happy. Same, I had the same card. It got a nine. The only gripe that I would say on my card centering was fine. Surface was fine. Everything was fine. The back bottom left corner had a little bit of white on it i think i think i agree with you the bottom corners if you're not going to get a gem that's why so if you see it perfect on the bottom corners that's probably got a really good chance that's the single most that's my advice too yeah just look at the backs and if the backs has has issues i think they're going to ding it even more because the front i don't know make sure you have no fingerprints Fingerprints are common on those too. Even for the PSA slab people, you can make it clean. You ship it to them. If they don't like oil sticks to those things, like literal glue. Uh, Peds, it's a pop 51 on that Julio. Peds was asking. 51 and a 10. Well, I have a nine. I haven't sold it. I just kept it. Yeah. It's a, I think it's like a 9% gem rate. So not very high on that. That's crazy. Yeah, that's got to be a big card then. In a ten, that's 
at least what six seven hundred bucks yeah recent sales of all all are in that i only see one currently listed on ebay and it, they're asking like 1500 but all the recent sales were six ish hundred 600 uh, yeah. going back a month ago the the nine i think goes for at least 120 maybe one 120 ago i've been watching Roz. Roz has been selling Roz have been selling for about 140 that's makes me think pretty the, consistently maybe out of crack it and just sell it raw <laughs> i have a couple of the raws that i should probably be selling but i do i i i'm i'm gonna hold it i don't know i mean i i didn't want to sell that one right away but all right let's move on to uh some pre-orders came out this week tops big league somebody just mentioned it striker making this year's lineup i think it's striker jabs size city poles i didn't even know who breaks with jess was or dr collectibles what an awesome feat i just want to give a personal shout out to jabs and striker i'm subscribed to them they've done a great job and i looked up the prices of the short print cards from last year i actually did a little work guys before we came in here jeff wilson's card last year raw is still selling between 50 and 80 bucks as a short print uh card collector two ryan johnson's card selling between 70 and 110 raw those cards are worth more than most baseball players cards which is insane so if you buy a big league might not be a bad thing and if you get a psa 10 in those it's worth about double i was checking that out not many uh sales but Again, 50 bucks. I'm not buying any big league like I always do, but did you guys get any? <laughs> Hell did no. not. <laughs> I, I hate that product. <laughs> I've never I, opened I it. am indifferent with. about it. I may pick some up because I am a fan of Striker, so I may pick up some boxes. Um, I have two boxes of 23 that I got for free from uh, Dave and Adams. I still haven't opened them. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, it's. I think it's fine. I think it's more for kids. It seems like, with all the inserts that how they are. But I'll it buy is. some. I think the irony of it is, you say it's for kids, and then they put influencer cards in there. The vast majority of the influence. I know. I know. I'm we're kid. all kids. We're all kids at heart. <laughs> Fair enough. But <laughs> somebody made this. Uh, comment the other day about the tops rip night they put in like get your first break free on fanatics live and it's sort of marketing gambling to kids i just think that's kind of funny that that the uh the vast majority of influencer cards that are in there are all breakers <laughs> it's like well here's a product designed for kids and we're putting yeah influencer breakers in here so you know the dads can uh can pay for their kids uh gambling addiction yeah, I thought the same thing about it. it was all breakers. It'd be kind of cool if something like Brett could have I been mean, in there. It, well, it would. Be, I would say look, it, it, look. Yeah, I was trying to think of other who other uh, personalities might be uh, you know worthy of being in there in terms of a kids product, um, and it, and it's a tough call um, because many people aren't going to want like some boring guy that you know has a great collection or something like that because you know maybe they're not influencers but like Marshall Fogel um you know dr beckett i mean they, they're probably catering to a different generation if they did that but those are like the ogs when it comes to probably having a really good collection i mean hell they could put brian gray in there <laughs> he's an influencer he's a big personality he's trying to look younger these days dyeing his hair i just hope one day the three of us are in there i i just i think it's i love the idea that they put him in there um like I said, I didn't even know who I don't even know who Doctor's Collectible is, and me neither. I'll, I'll go look him up. I I, I don't know. Bra I've heard of Breaks with Jess, but I've never seen any of her content. This makes me want to go look it up. And you know, even like we, I think the three of us know Jabs and Striker because they do baseball content nonstop. But I think you'd be surprised how many people have no idea who they are either. Just the random. Schmo who goes in and buys a, a box and hey, what's the striker card? You know, so that that's a that'll be a big change for both those guys. Um and Shy City Pulls. All, all uh, five of them to be quite honest I, with you. I know you're a big fan of his. I I 
Hey guys, I'm very, <laughs> I, I am, I am very tolerant when it comes to personalities. I have to be. Come I, on, I, Brett, be honest. I have to be. I, I, I love jab stuff. I'm being totally up. I'm gonna shoot the shit straight right here. You gotta be I, honest about Chai City. You don't like the guy. I, I, I don't dislike the guy. I don't necessarily. I thought you were talking about jabs. I don't. No, really, I'm talking about Chai City Pulse. No, I don't. I don't like the tone. I don't dislike what he does, though. I'm not a hater. The dude's been very successful, and I'm not going to be envious of people who he puts in the work. He do, he does stuff I'm not doing. Um, I don't necessarily. I'm not. I'm not into his style. I don't like his style. It's not for me. You want to know something? I still freaking watch. Really? I, when, I watch a lot of his videos. I'm okay. subscribed. Do you watch? I, do you watch him muted? I, I still watch them. Most of them, <laughs> unless it's just a sport, unless it's a sport that I don't like. Like if he's open to baseball stuff, I usually watch to see just how somebody who I believe doesn't know a lot about baseball, how they take the product. Cause it's always good to get angles from both ways, from people who don't open baseball. Like I'm interested, like with card collector too, for example, he's not into baseball and he never has been, but you want to know something? He's been buying Jackson Holiday. He's been buying Jackson Troy out. Like, you can learn from other people. And, again, it's not everybody's cup of tea. We could go on a rant with Jabs and Striker and Shy City Poles. But I have a heart for everybody. Again, I'm, I'm not jealous. I just hope to one day be one of those 10 so far. I would love to, to be on a card. That would be, like, the, the ultimate like, I don't know what would be better. And I just, I don't know. I don't know how to say that. But, yeah, you're right. It is is Shy City Polls is not my number one go-to when it comes to, like, when I see his video pop up, it just depends on what he's opening. He has a better tagline for his hometown team. Like, uh, it's way better than yours, you know. I'm joking. The I'm White Sox. Joking. The White Sox suck. His Chicago <laughs> <laughs> you gotta say it like that it's gotta literally last like 12 seconds it's got to <laughs> the minimum i don't know josh have you ever watched his content uh so i have um i used to watch a lot of those kind of guys when i first got back but it's been a long time i don't watch much of his anymore um some of the other breakers like him i try i can't even think of the name um I don't know, but no, I don't anymore. Um, I typically just straight watch baseball guys. Mostly small channels is what I watch. And then obviously striker. I don't watch jabs much. Every once in a while when, you know, when the new set comes out and he's open up a crap ton of it, it's kind of fun to watch like Brett does. It's good to see a big uh, amount of it being yeah. ripped just for kind of, you know, just knowledge about the product. Even though he doesn't talk about it a lot, it's just you can visually see it and kind of get a feel for it. <laughs> Uh, but big league overall it, like i said it's 50 bucks uh you can go buy last year's product for 30 right now so if you if you like 2023 big league it's 30 bucks a box um i i, I don't know it just it just isn't for me i think it's okay here's another topic that i didn't really have but what tops is doing i don't know how much they're putting on for pre-order but they didn't sell out of big league. Like people are like, oh my God, big league sold out. They're doing mm -hmm. that to make the perception that yeah. this stuff is selling out fast. There's yeah. going to be big league everywhere. Well, they did the same thing with top series one, right? They put the jumbos on pre pre-order and then uh, they sold out, right? Almost immediately. You can, I, I, I think you can still get the jumbos on the tops website now. And that's what, like a month later, almost. We're, we're get coming up on about 30 days now. So they don't, they do not put a hundred percent on pre-order. There's no way they put probably a, a fraction, you know, to create a, a FOMO, right? Fear of missing out. Um, you didn't need me to tell you that. But, but it seems like, yeah, then they, the pre-order that's a set price. And then there's a release. They, that's fair. It. they yeah. kind of pump it up 10% or something like that. And have, obviously have more. So the pre-sale, yeah, it sold out, but. Clearly, there's going to be plenty of it at yeah, Walmart. Yeah, it's kind of like buying an airplane ticket, right? When you think about it, it's like, 
not all the airline seats are going to go for the same price. They might put so many up for the certain price. Once they're done with those, it goes to a different price. So that's a fair way of looking at it, Josh, when it comes to pre-orders. It might be you want $150 a box. You're going to need to lock that in right now because it's going to be $165 on release day or something like that. Did you say that? Did they have blasters last year? Did you say they had blasters? I I haven't even kept up on big. They league. did, yeah. They did, yeah. yeah they, they've had those before. I don't I don't know what you get in those, but for twenty five bucks, my my god, just buy the hobby. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. I mean, that's, that seems crazy to think that two retail blasters cost the same as a hobby. I mean, you better get a hobby box in your retail blaster. You better get some really cool stuff because <laughs> twenty five bucks seems way. Oh, is that There's last actually, year? That's, that's the hobby. Year? I got this for free. Hey, man. I don't even know what comes in it. If you get an auto or anything, I have no it, clue. No, you, I don't think you're guaranteed an auto at all. I think yeah, you said. you might get one or two numbered cards, but that's about it. But Anything if, free is good. Free's good. I'll take free. <laughs> free yeah, and cheap. I would open free. Yeah, I got it when I ordered some of my cases over Black Friday, over Christmas. When I was getting a bunch of cases, they offered those for free. So I got a couple. That's cool. Now, one other thing that is not free and it's not cheap is they were pre-selling Topps Tribute for 500 a box. I forgot to look up the case. Cases were available for a little while, but they're sold out too. Man, that is that is just that's a big boy product. I don't I personally I'm not a big fan of it. But what's the uh fun. what's the makeup of that product? What is that the uh but I mean, it's different than diamond icons or definitive. What's the what's the makeup of that product? Is it closer to like a museum collection? I think yeah, I think that would be a good comparison. Um, let me see if I can get on here to look. Does it? I mean, what is it like? Several autos per box? Like you get like a single pack, like a single like jeweler's box or something like that? I, I don't, wanna, don't remember that product uh, from last year. I don't want to misquote the uh, number of autographs. I think there's like. Six packs could be wrong. Let's see here. Description. Uh, let's see here. Three cards per pack, six packs per box. Sounds more like a museum collection. How many autographs? Oh, three auto three relics is what okay. um, is what uh, Nunzi eighty three says. So three thousand dollars per box. That's insane. That's insane. I don't. That's, I, that's a hundred. Hundred and fifty dollars an auto, roughly. That's cra that's crazy. That I don't know. The checklist not, better be preloaded. That product's <laughs> not for me. What do you think, Josh? You open any of those? Uh, no, no, not at all. Um, if Bobby Witt had a rookie card in it, I'd be tempted. But um, it's yeah, I have not spent that much on any boxes. I did buy some of the Bowman draft when it came out. Twenty three Bowman draft. Um, and those were expensive, but I, that's why I like baseball. Cause you can get boxes for dirt cheap retail has hit. So those products are not something I do a lot. I did a few when I first got in just for, to test it out and it, yeah, you can get smoked on those things. Yeah. And that was there. Those can be really brutal. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 did wish, one... I wish there was a way to with like a product like tops tribute, for example, how many people actually open a box personally versus the number of boxes or cases opened by breakers? Because somebody in the chat said that's an exclusive breakers um, product. I agree. They Tops would not be able to sell these products for as much as they are if it wasn't for breaking. And again, some people love breaking. Some people hate breaking. I've been in the middle. I've been in plenty of breaks. But I think the breaks have been able to keep the the price of these products high because the cost is split. And but I would love to know the percentage of personal boxes versus. Well, I think that's the boxes. same with all the high end Panini products. There's yep, most of those are that's hundred percent, not hundred percent, but a lot of breaker stuff. I watched a lot of that when I first got back into the hobby, mm -hmm. and those breaks. You know, people would spend five thousand dollars on a on a certain team in a you know a case oh, yeah. break of these boxes and it's like yeah yeah i just remember watching a lot of 2020 football get broken and just seeing like the 
the brakes were filling so rapidly when Herbert and Burrow and that was the chase. And before that, it, people were getting Jordan Love and it was like, Jordan who? Now, I, <laughs> now you might want to you bust those Jordan Loves out. That's uh, that's big business now. Speaking of football, the Chiefs won the Super Bowl again. I mean, who are the Chiefs? I, I, you, have you heard of them, Casey? You've heard of uh, a guy by the name of Patrick Mahomes? It's been fun. I will say that. <laughs> um, I honestly, I just, I got back into football because of Mahomes. I got burned out about 2010 ish. I too much fantasy football, too much involved in that. So I kind of burned out and I kind of just watched from the sidelines. I followed the Chiefs. And then the year he played the last couple games of the season. I was like, I'm all in next year. I was all about it, and it's been fun. So now everybody hates us. So <laughs> we'll take it. What happens when you win? Well, while we've transitioned to this, let's ask Josh some questions. Yeah, we oh, can boy. go to tell, Ka- tell us a little bit about your questions. Obviously, you're from Kansas City, and you're Royals fan, Chiefs fan. How'd you get back into collecting recently and start the? Uh, so get, yeah. Get um, been a sports fan my whole life on and off um royals have always meant it tough to be a diehard fan although I, i've always been a, a royals fan but um actually my you've heard me talk about him herms uh it's a guy i work with we did some disc golf together um for years um and he just told me about cards like there's a card shop and so i just said oh okay and i walked in and i looking around like i had no clue what was going on i recognized you know, a lot of the you know the sets um all the panini you know had all the donruss and whatever they are fleer i don't even know what i don't pay much attention to the panini products but i knew all the names a lot of the sets except for the high-end ones and i just started from there and a lot of series two from 2022 i ripped a bunch of that having fun um, that's kind of what got me into my first box. I got my Bobby, the Bobby SP. Nice. I think that got me hooked. <laughs> uh, yeah. Good, so that was a good product to chase. I know you opened. Yeah. I, do you keep track of how much you opened when it comes to 2022 update? You were probably, I don't know. You or Brett was the number other than a breaker was probably the number one opener of that product on YouTube. I wish I would have. I wish I would have kept a lot better records of everything. I'm not that. I need it actually. My buddy Herms, he he keeps records like no one else. Um, I wish I would have because I know I've opened a bunch. I know I've probably done at least 12 to 15 cases. (laughs) Wow. Plus a bunch of loose stuff that I've just bought. So have you? I still have some. So. Has it ever been opened off camera for what we see on camera? Is that everything you've opened or have you opened some off? Camera? Um, I definitely have opened stuff off camera. The 22 update, probably not as much. Um, I think cause I, well, I was ripping stuff before my channel, but that came out in October and I didn't start my channel till technically like the end of October. And then really it was December of 22. I really kind of kickstarted it. So then, but yeah, since then probably not much for update has been ripped off i do rip stuff off camera occasionally lately even more uh, sometimes i'll just kind of i'll put it on camera just having fun and then like i don't always put it up there I, I and i just get lazy i did a case of 22 heritage high number um i've been doing a case weekly well, not a case but a box of a case weekly and then i was doing i just did another case because i bought them for cheap and i got some cool hits i got a gold i think i sent the pictures to brett I got a gold um, rookie on the Chrome, so out of five, um, I got a red another red Egato, but it's one video, and so it's hours upon hours to edit the video. I was like, I didn't get a Bobby, so I meant to do it over my vacation and have it up, and then it just gets lost in the ether, and so mm-hmm. there's a lot of stuff that does, not a lot, but sometimes I'll do stuff like that and just doesn't get made into a video because this is not, this is just a a side hobby is fun to do the YouTube and yeah. I, so I, I, I do rip that, off. I think that gets lost from a lot of the casual people. I, I That's why I don't do any editing because dude, it's enough work to open your cards live and then go put them away, but then they have to go edit videos too. That's just, 
It doesn't sound yeah. like a lot of fun to me. I love the editing aspect of it. I'm I come a fairly creative person, sort of, I guess. I don't know. But I like to do the editing. I wish I could do more of the editing and kind of do a better job of the prepping ahead of time so that my edits will be better, more planned, a little bit more planned out as far as talking points and like our striker does it you know he like it's amazing to watch that I, I i know how much effort that goes into that and per he's just good at it because he does a lot of it but it's not easy he makes it look easy i try and it looks bad probably so um, well the three of us you know we're doing this for personal rips mostly you've gotten in, you've dabbled into the breaking but we yeah, all a little have bit for fun we all have jobs right so it's it's hard to put your when you're not full time into doing this and you're working, it's it's hard to put all that time in. But so what what do you what do you want to share what you do full time or? Uh, yeah, um, sure. I'm an air traffic controller. Um, I talk to airplanes. I don't have as much anymore. I became a supervisor recently, which they offer me a good pay raise. I don't regret much in life. I kind of regret that choice because I really like talking to airplanes more. Now I sit at a desk watching everybody else work more. Uh, so yeah, just been doing that for, I don't know, 16, 16 years now. Um, I, uh, interesting job. I don't, it's not, I'm not at an airport. I work in a little, a uh, big government building, dark room with radar scopes. I was going to say, my background has got to be feeling right at home, right? In the when I'm down here in the basement in the dark, I got a chance to tour. I work in the aerospace industry as well, so we do share that in common. Didn't know that about you being an air traffic controller. Um, right before Christmas time, I took I'm the uh, Indiana section chair for AIAA. I don't know if you ever heard of AIAA, uh, American nope. Institute of uh, Aeronautics and Astronautics. I'm the chair for the Indiana section. We did a field trip as a group to the local Indianapolis center for the FAA. For Air Traffic Control Center, we got to go in the tower at the airport. We got to go in the control center. Then we did the regional center, which is the Indianapolis Center as well. Maybe you've communicated with them. You said you don't work at an airport. You work. Yeah, you know, I, work at a, I work at a center. So, yeah. You work at a um, center. Is, yeah, that the, like is that the Kansas City Center? I yeah, can't Kansas remember. City Center. Yep. Okay. So, if you've ever talked to the Indianapolis Center folks, if you've ever had to, that uh, that facility, we did tour that facility along with the tower. The one thing that struck me is the dark rooms. I, I tell you that. Yep. Well, well I know they ha used to have the green screens with the, you know, the 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 old tube style. Now it's all digital displays, but they love the dark rooms. If you if you ever get a chance, Brett, go tour mm. an air traffic control center. <laughs> It'll really enlighten you to that line of work, and it, it's really interesting. There's one in Chicago. Um, I think it's. I want to say it's Pe no, is it Peoria? I can't I think where. Somewhere in I southern in Chicago is a center. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, I didn't know that. Well, I I, yeah. I I could talk aerospace all day. That's not why we're here for batter up. Unless you want also, to talk. I like SpaceX too. Yeah, you like SpaceX. Been... Well, I work I work at Rolls Royce, so okay. you know uh, aerospace. We make the engines. We don't make the cars. Cars are made by BMW. We sold that years ago. But, uh, but yeah, we make engines. So I work in, in defense aerospace. So, but that's cool. Well, you like the Chiefs? go ahead, John. Go ahead. I was going to say, a relative to Kansas City sports, you mentioned the Royals. So Bobby Witt was going to ask you about the Royals this year. What are the prospects? Are they going to make the playoffs or are they still on the way up? Well, I'm, I'm a homer. So I, I think they have a, sh a legit shot. I am a homer, and I, I, I think they're going to be better than what people think. But also, they lost the hundred games last year. So if they're going to be better, no matter what, I just think they. I think they have a shot. I think they got uh, the new pitch. All the pitching they got, if it just works, I think the the batting is going to come. All the young guys you got Benny back. Um, and then there's the whole slew of young guys that all played together last year that most people don't know anything about um, besides Bobby. So, and you got Salvador Perez, one of the greatest players of all time, in my opinion. So to kind of lead the crew, be the, the old man on there. So 
I think they got a, sh- a legit shot just because of the AL Central is I, hot garbage. Man. I was going to say they're in the one of the most attainable divisions in baseball. Whether, yeah. you know, the White Sox, the Tigers, the Indians, twins. the Guardians, uh, Indians, Guardians, uh, Twins, and then the Royals. So that's a very attainable division. If you're going to win a division, that's one that doesn't require a lot of wins. Usually the 85 to 87 wins gets it done. Yeah. I think they have. I think they have the tools to do it. They got they got Reagan last year um, in the trade for uh, for Chapman. And I think he has. He was one of the best pitchers the second half of the year. And then there's just other young pitching that we've had. And then with all the vets they picked up, it, it could obviously all go to go to hell in a handbasket real quick. But it, they're making some moves, and they got the young bats, the young lineup, uh, with a couple young stud pitchers, and I'm excited. I am, and I, I think they have a legit shot. I I I agree. I think uh, any team in that division can win. I think Cleveland's going to be solid. I don't know about their pitching, but I think their bats will be solid. Uh, I think the Twins could be solid, but it depends. I think yeah, the I would say that garbage the, and the Twins or the Royals probably. would be if you had to make me pick somebody. Those would be my two top picks. Twins and uh, Twins and Royals. Yeah, but yeah, but you never know. You never know. Yeah, that's why they play the games. 162 games is a long season. Coming up in just under 20 some days. Yeah, I can't. I can't wait, man. It's been a. It's been a long winter, although it hasn't been super cold here. But man, I'm ready. The prime time selling season is upon us. You got those cards. <laughs> Sell them. Kansas City sports, other than football and baseball, they don't really have anything, right? What other teams would you follow if you were? A, they uh, uh, they have Sporting KC, um, and then they have, they have the women's soccer t- league. Um, I don't follow soccer enough. I love soccer personally. I grew up playing soccer, but American soccer just isn't that great. So I I, I tried to like the MLS when it first came out, and just never clicked with me. Um, but that's it. There's I think there's some sort of hockey team. I don't know what league it is, but I think there's a hockey team as well. And then there's the uh, T-Bones. I think it's the T-Bones. Is that right? Uh, <laughs> up by the racetrack. Uh, it's up by the racetrack. I've only been to a couple games. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think that's, that's, that's all I can think of. All right. Well, Oh yeah. I, Casey Mavericks. That's what I, uh, Adam says there. That's right. Casey Mavericks. Oh, Casey Mavericks. Yeah. I had a question for you, Josh. Was this your first national that you went to this summer? It was great seeing you there. Yeah, that was my yeah, that was the first one. Um, that was a blast. Uh, it was honestly, I I had no clue what was going on. I just had fun walking around. My son was there, um, and he doesn't even do sports cards. He just kind of went with me. Um, but we had a blast uh, for two days. I wish we could have stayed there longer, but it's insane what's all there we had, i just talked to random people i'd stop at the some of the booths that i had no interest in stuff like for me to actually buy or anything but just because it was interesting like some of the memorabilia guys that had some crazy stuff we just sat there and talked to them and asked where did you get this stuff and they just <laughs> have stuff you know from 30 years ago that they got from some guy in the parking lot that they knew you know after the games or something um but it's fun i hope to go this year up in Cleveland, I'm hoping to. That'd be awesome. Nope. Let me ask one more question, Josh, before you go, John. Um, no problem. Like for anybody who's watching or may watch after and they've never been, tell them why they should go. Like just to experience their first one. Why someone should go. Um, well, I will say this. If you could go with people – it would, it's a lot better. I mean, if you're walking around, unless you're like a man on a mission, you know what you want to do. Uh, if you just, I mean, if you just want to go and soak it in, go with a group of people, I'd say. It just would make it easier because after a while, you're just like, I don't know what I'm doing. But if you have different people who kind of want to look at different stuff, there's just so much stuff. Um, but I would definitely say go, well, you know, talk to people. That's the biggest thing when you're there as well is talk to people, ask questions. Most people are super cool and friendly. I mean, obviously, don't be rude. You know, there's a lot of deals going on, but there's plenty of people that have the time to sit there and chit chat with you. 
uh, ask questions, you know, learn. Um, I didn't do a lot of that. Me and my son just walked around. We we're just gawking at a lot of stuff. Um, but I kind of, we did talk a little bit, but I kind of wish maybe we would have interacted more with the guys that are there set up because they, they're pros. I know that we watched quite a few deals going down and that was entertaining. It's crazy the amount of money that changes in too. But, um, so yeah, I guess if you could go with a group of guys, um, or a friend, a buddy or something, and then just be, you know, be assertive, talk to get, talk to people there, you know, and it's not the easiest thing to do for most people, but you can learn a lot and it's just, it makes it just would make it a lot better. If you actually, Brett's gone. Uh Oh, um, lost Brett. He'll be back. Uh, but yeah, I, I definitely would recommend going if you could go. Um, I, I will say that, uh, I've enjoyed the last two years going. I don't know that I'll be able to go this year because it's in Cleveland. It would be close, closer by to me. Uh, but overall, uh, there'll be just a ton going on with my son going to college. So I don't, I don't think I'm going to make it this year, but I will definitely be back in Chicago uh, for the next three years, hopefully to all three, but we'll see. And maybe next time we'll see you there. Yeah, uh, Arnie makes a good point too. Down that the cardeal.com, he says cash, and that's definitely something I wish I, I meant to bring a couple thousand dollars in cash. I literally left it in my car at the airport, so Ooh. I had to get cash by trading some cards away that I brought the seller trade to have cash because they like cash. They do. Yep. It's definitely easier to make deals that way. Yeah. I wanted to circle back on Kansas City Royals baseball. So obviously we know Bobby. We're hot on it. We won't. We are not off that subject. We're going to go back to that subject. We all know about Bobby Witt. We all know he's the guy. He's the face of the franchise. Who are some guys that the hobbyists may not know about, or that they do know about, who've been sleeping and lurking in the dot in in the in the weeds that could um, have a great year this year. Uh, I don't. Unfortunately, they're all pretty much already at the big leagues. There's really not any prospects. There's a couple out there, uh, but they are way down. Um, I think people know about Vinny, the Italian nightmare. He was unfortunately hurt. He came off smoking last year. I think people at least know about him. He's obviously not a huge hot, not have a huge hobby following, but um, I think uh, Mikel Garcia, Adam just put in there. Uh, watching him last year was a lot of fun. Um and then there's a whole bunch of other guys that I'm not sold on. You know, the Drew Waters, the Michael Massey, um, a handful of those kind of guys. I like, like Kyle Isbell. He's been playing center field. But unfortunately, there's not a lot of big guys that have, I think, real hobby potential um, and really not to be superstars. Uh, Garcia, I think, can. Vinny. Vinny's a character as well. He's just a likable guy. He – yeah, I don't know. He does – I think he does a lot of social media stuff. I'm not a big social media guy, honestly. I don't follow a lot of people on it. I don't pay attention to a lot of it, but I think he does a lot of that. Um, so I think he has a good shot. And then that's unfortunately it as far as the hobby. But it makes it fun to be able to collect those guys because they're cheaper. Bobby's super expensive. Those other guys are cheap. I bought I bought two Mikel Garcia autographs. One was a numbered one. Both were on card. I think I paid – I got them both in a lot for like 12 bucks. So it makes it easy. But I'm, I'm finishing up opening a case of 2023 update blasters. I got these for $12 a piece. If I'm not mistaken, the reason I asked is I was getting a bunch of Royals color match in the green pair or in the blue parallels, the Royal blue, the blue speckle, and a couple of the Halloween parallels and some numbered stuff. And I was like wondering, these are all Royals. Are any of these guys any good? <laughs> I did get a bunch of Garcia. I got a uh, yeah, of color match I mean, So I just I don't I'm know if there's gonna be anything of value <laughs> anytime soon, unfortunately. Um I like Drew Waters. Like um but I really don't I don't see a lot of potential as far as stardom for a lot of those okay. guys, but which it doesn't take it for the Royal I mean the Royals like I mean 2014 15 to me, they were stars, all those players, you know, uh, Moose and, um, oh, my goodness, Hosmer. 
uh, Gordon. Gordon was a bigger name guy because he's been around a while. But all those other guys are kind of on their way up. And Lorenzo Kane, Escobar, yeah, solid players all gelling, playing together. Uh, I think that's what we're going to see if the Royals succeed. And I don't. I mean, we have Bobby. He's obviously a superstar. And then um, there's a yeah, there's a, there's a couple guys in the minor leagues that. I don't think that, you know, no, no big hype. I mean, I think if we have one in the top 100, I think it's Blake Mitchell, the catcher. And, that, and then there's no one else in the top 100. And he's like probably 80 or something like that. So there's not a lot of hype, unfortunately, for the young guys. Um, I, guess, I mean, I guess it's a double-edged sword. They're not, you know, super collectible as far as value-wise, but it makes it fun to collect. Um, I've been buying some bendies, actually. Uh, just bought these. I got these from Adrian. The this is out of fifty. Oh, now this one's out of fifty. The blue, and then this is the chrome, the pearl white out of thirty. And I bought these from her. Um, if that was a Bobby rookie like that, it would have been hundreds of dollars. Instead, I spent a total. I think it was thirty plus some shipping for the both of those. So, wow, it always helps when you have a hometown team that you believe in, and that you can buy guys for cheap and prospect on a really cheap cheap level. Um, I think I probably could have done that with the Colts over the last couple of years, but I didn't really do that. Dude, it's that's why the hobby's kind of weird because, like, for example, as a Cubs fan, I can go get Chris Morrell stuff really cheap. I believe Chris Morrell's a really great player and could have a monster season. Suzuki stuff is relatively cheap. Cheap. cheap yeah. And unless you're on the hobby hype train, it is hard to push up and get to those big dollars like Julio and Bobby and you name, you know, Ellie De La Cruz. I was just looking at Ellie De La Cruz prices. You know, everybody's like, oh, Ellie sucks. Ellie De La Cruz, he's striking out all the time. We'll go look at his prices right now as the hype machine is cranking back up. His price, I think his Mojo PSA 10 first is between 90 and 100 bucks right now. Um, it's hard to get that hype going. And when these prospects come out and they get the hobby hype, they get it. And then you'll have other dudes who are really good and they never even come close to that. You know, Kyle Tucker, I talk about, I don't know. It seemed like he gets brought up a lot and dude, he's a stud mm -hmm. and he's cheap. Yep. Yeah. You know, it's funny though, that that same analogy was brought up. Earlier today, uh, Teapot made a video talking about NBA draft classes and going down as like the all time best, you know, whether it be the, the 96 draft class, the 03, the uh, 1984. And then he mentioned, I thought he was going to mention 2017. And then he instead he mentioned 2018, which had Luca, Shea, Trey Young, and a couple other guys. And it was really interesting because guys that don't get the hype, they can be really good players. Until you make the Hall of Fame, nobody will give an absolute crap about you. And I said that about the 2017 draft class. I made a comment in that video, and I said, you know, I think the 2017 draft class is so deep right now, top to bottom, with guys. And everybody commented back, or not everybody, but everybody that did said, it's Tatum or nobody. And I said, well, you mean to tell me that Donovan Mitchell doesn't matter? He's not a good player? Garen Fox, my guy, not a good player, not having a great season, the best of his career? I mean, arguably, you guys would say that he should just leave the NBA because he sucks. But I think the hobby is so narrow-minded that guys like Kyle Tucker never get a chance because they never made Sports Center highlights from the very get-go to be relevant. And you really have to make an effort. And that'll get us to our next subject. We're going to get there, Brett. You know where I'm going with this. We're going to talk about basketball, but now we're not going to talk about the NBA. We're going to talk about <laughs> something else. Here we go. Here we go. This was the hot debate that we had pre-stage, uh, pre-live tonight. I've got strong feelings on this. But, you know, when it comes to hype, it, it's really it'll, – it'll be very sad if – I'm just going to say as a, as a De'Aaron Fox guy, and you may say the same thing for Bobby Witt. If he goes down as the best royal of all time and Fox goes down as the best king of all time, they may never have the hobby love because – Maybe they never won a title. Maybe they never won an MVP. But that doesn't make them not a great player. And I think that's really sad that there are more sports fans out there that just want to have the piece of cardboard as a memento to say, man, I really love watching this guy play. 
even if he never won jack squat, I just really loved watching him play. So, I don't know. Anyway, we're going to move on to our next topic. We're going to talk about none other than Caitlin Clark. Brett had very strong feelings, not for Caitlin Clark, about Caitlin Clark. <laughs> <laughs> Brett's single, you know, maybe, maybe he died. Not, I'm not trying to do it. <laughs> I'm going to make Brett turn red. Uh, oh, man. But anyway, talking about Caitlin Clark and whether it was the right decision to go to the WNBA or not. Hey, but, hey, before we get into that, the reason we're really talking about her is she's signed an exclusive deal with Panini. Um, this is a good move by Panini to sign her because she's got some massive hype, like we just talked about, behind her. And I, I believe this is a good move. Her cards are – I mean, go look at her cards, guys. They're selling for quite a bit, man. So, so anyway, we were – we should have waited for behind the scene, from behind the scenes, but – in the chat, should she go pro or should she stay in college? Because she announced she is going to the WNBA next year. I, I didn't know this. The league minimum is $76,000. Um, that's what she's going to be making next year. I guess that it's not the minimum. That's the max contract. Now, that's, granted, max? that's $76,000. That's insane. She's going to be making that. Pro that's her salary next year for her contract. Now, granted, she's going to be making a lot of money, but my take was if she should stay one more year of college, ride the hype train at Iowa. They're selling out the stadium there. And then John's I agreed. On the flip side. I agreed. What do you guys think, John? Uh, yeah, I, I agreed with that aspect. I think um, I don't watch either NBA, the WNBA. I don't watch NBA anymore, uh, but definitely not the WNBA. I've heard of Caitlin Clark. I don't follow college sports all that much, but obviously I've heard of her. Because, um, I, I mean, you just hear about everybody. But um, I think he's right. I think the NCAA is probably a much bigger market than the WNBA. But I also agree with John that she's going to do well no matter what. So going to the WNBA, um, there's probably, you know, some moves she's making behind the scenes we don't know about. But I would say she'd have more – of a higher profile, honestly, still doing another year in the, uh, in college, just because the NCAA, it's probably going to be a much, you know, it's a much bigger product than the WNBA. So the way I look, but at I'm kind of neutral. I don't really care either way, but I have real strong feelings, but just thinking about it logically, that's my conclusion. <laughs> I think arguments can be made for both sides here. I think for me, uh, Part of it may be a little bit of a selfish viewpoint. I, I live in Indiana. She's going to go to the Indiana Fever unless she pulls a John Elway and says, I'm not playing for the Fever, and says, you need to trade me or else. But I think her in the same market as Tyrese Halliburton, it, that's a great pairing of two young stars. That can go really well. That can be very marketable. That will bring a lot of attention and eyeballs to both the Pacers and the Fever. The Indy Card Exchange is a great hobby shop for the for the whole of the country, more or less. They're going to pump the absolute crap out of Caitlin Clark. They're going to have tons of hype around her. That'll bleed over into Card Collector 2, my guess. That'll bleed over into other Midwestern card shops that are on the bigger end. I think going a step forward from that in terms of how do you market the WNBA – we just had the All-Star Weekend where the game was dreadful. The dunk contest was dreadful. People didn't like the three-point contest. But you know what everybody did like? Sabrina Ionescu against Stephen Curry. That was the best thing that happened in All-Star Weekend was a WNBA player going head-to-head -head against the NBA's best shooter of all time. The NBA and the WNBA will figure out a way to make Caitlin Clark not only the face of the WNBA, but – have conversation with her regularly in WN in the NBA circles. And so I think they will make sure that the WNBA elevates because of this. Now I know the WNBA may never elevate to NBA and even NBA is sort of on the decline since Michael Jordan. And since, you know, what happened in 
in the bubble. We're not going to go there, but it can only go up, right? Because it's already out of floor. So it can only get higher and higher and higher. I guess we'll just see what happens. I mean, if she becomes an absolute star in the WNBA, marketed to no end, everybody's going to want to go watch her if she comes, becomes the best WNBA player of all time. And then they're going to have exhibitions like they had with Steph Curry. And Halliburton is going to be right there and say, that's my girl. You know, I'm telling you, it, it, it can't go wrong where it's sort of falling into place where she's going to end up in a yard in a market with already a young star on the NBA team. If she was going somewhere that had no NBA team or had a very crappy NBA team, that would be a different story. But I think this is going to work out. Yeah. I might take either way. Let's face it. She's going to do well for herself because she's, she's making a ton of money on endorsements. My, my take was that she would, we were just talking about hobby hype or just hype as an athlete that this would extend her hype another year in college because there's so much. I mean, dude, they're showing her prime time on Peacock games, on prime time everywhere on TV, which they will do with the WNBA too. Don't get me wrong. But it extends that hype one more year because every point she puts up, she becomes that much more. She Dude, the NCAA has a ton of money behind her too. I would argue that the NCAA has more money than the WNBA because the NBA is pretty much, I don't know how much, I, I'd have to do some research to see how much they're putting behind the women's game because they, they're the ones that keep that league alive. I do know that, but it's, yeah. it's interesting. Um, and again, here we are, we're on this channel, Baseball Dudes, talking about the hobby of sports cards about Caitlin Clark. Which is pretty incredible. She was the she was the number one gainer in the last ninety days, I think, in terms of card prices. Yeah. I and and I, I gotta be honest. I I don't watch women's basketball. I don't either. So this year, I go to a Fever game. I mean, maybe just for the sheer enjoyment of uh, joining the hype. I don't know. I I, I, have, I, gotta I have a twelve year old and she plays basketball, so that's all the women's basketball I watch. And and it's you know fun and both rough, but it's 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 entertaining. <laughs> there's there's <laughs> girls that are gonna play because they've seen Caitlin Clark. It's a it's a movement man. It's pretty incredible. It'll be um, really interesting to see what happens. But yeah. she's gonna get a lot of endorsements. Somebody mentioned a shoe deal. Guarantee there's there's gonna be money there to be made. Oh yeah. She's making money either way. It's going to be a lot of money. But anyway, I, I had some questions for KC as well. Okay. Changing gears here. Yep. Um, what's your favorite disc golf course in Kansas City? Oh, man. I have not disc golf, unfortunately, in three – since COVID, for some reason. I went one time over COVID, um, I think, with either my son or my wife. Um, there's a couple new courses I haven't played much. Let me think. And they've redone a couple. I, there was one in Olathe. I well, actually, there's a few in Olathe. Um, dang, I, I couldn't even tell you. It's been, I'm trying to think of the courses. Um, I like the Heritage one because um, it's south. It's closer to me, but it's also a fun one. There's the um, the two up by Ro – is it Rosedale Park, I think it's yeah, called? Rosedale has two courses. Yeah, the upper and the lower. Those are fun. I like those. Probably my, the fate I've played are those two. Um, but there's quite there's tons of good courses. Even south, yes. there's a couple new ones. Um, Kansas then, City is a, Kansas City is one of my favorite places I've ever played disc golf. I haven't been there since 2009. I've know they I've known they've added some courses. Yeah, I there's a ton. Of, there's a ton of courses, so it's. I don't know why I haven't got back into. It. I I live out in land, so I I actually have a I have a um, a basket out in my yard, um, and I'll throw that. I think I go out there maybe four times a year. Unfortunately, that's it. Yeah. Just toss them around for a while, but it's it's fun. I wish I, I need to get back into it. So, anybody who's watching, if you're in Kansas City, go to Waterworks Park. And go play that course. That's one of my the funnest courses in the whole country. It's it's even it's it is beginner friendly, no matter where you're playing from. And it that's one of my favorite places. 
And that's what I've heard, Brett. It's uh, that's a good course, the Waterworks. I've never played it. It's way up north from me. I live way south, so never been there. I have one of my most memorable disc golf throws in of the million throws that I've thrown at um, at Cliff Drive Park. It's in a pro- pretty enough, pretty rough neighborhood. I wouldn't go there now. I don't think there's a lot of bad stuff going there. But in the 2009 Pro Worlds, I skip based a hole on that course. <laughs> so I, I will never forget that shot. But if you're playing disc golf, Kansas City's amazing. Uh, we had a comment here talking about Series 1. Now, we didn't even talk about Series 1. And I was going to ask Casey a question about favorite product of all time to rip. But I think that might be a dumb question because it's probably one with a green box. <laughs> <laughs> um, that definitely has a special a special place in my heart. And it has a, you see those boxes, you get this, I, you get a certain reaction every time you see a box, you're about to open it. It's no, that's definitely no doubter. Um, so we could go somewhere else. I'm mean, going to uh, I honestly, 22 platinum. I remember when that thing came out. I was like, this thing's gonna be so stupid. And I, I still rip that now. I, I rip it off camera. Um, the so I work platinum. mids now as a supervisor. I had to stay awake all night at a desk. So about two o'clock, one to two o'clock, it's dead. I'm doing nothing. I bring some boxes and I rip a box of that almost every week now, just one little blaster and some others just because of what you can get out of it. Speaking of, I just gemmed up a Julio. Nice. From that, that a, this game. That's the a blue prism or is that a. No, it's the blue echo. sparkle. I think it's I what it is. Blue one mini diamond at a 199. So yeah, um, that that's honestly just something fun just because the value in it. I, I like the value of that rip. Um, it's just fun. You get hits every box of blaster. You get normally two numbered cards. So I, I just, I don't know. I like it when you get hits. It's fun. Uh, update honestly can be kind of just like any of the flagship can be rough. You open it. It's just like, Oh, well, but that at least you feel satisfied because you get multiple, <laughs> multiple numbered cards out of a $25 blaster. Except for when you're pulling black Julio's. Yes, that's that's definitely uh, that. That's why you do it, though. If that's but that's far and few between. I've you have you seen? I've opened up plenty, and uh, but yeah, the bolt the pull two black Julios, and that was off camera too. That second one, um, I made a short. Uh, my buddy Mason, just a local guy that um, I honestly I just met through the hobby. Uh, my first time going live, he was in there chatting it up. I'm I'm KC well, and now we've hooked up for friends. We you know. We're in the OG crew where we talk daily, um, but yeah, we were at the card shop together and um, we had a little pack battle uh, and there were four of the jumbo packs left in a jumbo box that there's always jumbos um, on the glass um, available for packs and that I buy often. And there's four left. He grabbed two. I grabbed the other two. I offered to trade. He declined. And then I got the, no, yeah, a second black Julio. I, I still can't believe it. No. <laughs> Man. Uh, he, he, he recorded it. He recorded it. Cause like, Oh, it's a black, it, it's a black and it was Seattle. And so he got his camera out and then sure enough. And he goes, Oh, ho, 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 and then says some choice words. Um, <laughs> uh, but that honestly, that's, what's fun. That's honestly, that's, been the best part about the hobby is just uh, that kind of stuff um, um i don't know if that card would gem up it's at psa right now they have it uh, it looks great center and everything but even if it doesn't i almost like that card better even if it doesn't gem uh just because of the story behind it uh it's just uh, i'll never forget that moment <laughs> at mason's expense sorry mason he's not here I, I haven't seen him Take that box battle. Yeah, I. Uh, speaking of opening products, so on my channel, I have a series of um, openings that are coming up. I did two videos so far. I think I'm on my th- yeah third one will come out tomorrow. I pre-recorded almost all of them. 2023 update paper flagship edition. I got them off Dave and Adams. They were a whole case was. With shipping, twelve dollars a box. Good deal for the blasters. So I figured 
I needed to make complete sets anyway of update for this year. And I know they were hard to come by and they're still going for a decent amount. So I thought if I make complete sets and I, I can finish the ones I've started that I'm ne missing a few cards and fill in the gaps and hopefully get more, this could be okay. And so far I would say, I don't know. I don't want to spoil it too much, but I pulled a hall of fame auto that was numbered out of 199 that's coming up in a couple videos. So that was probably my, I want to say that's probably my best card so far. So pretty nice pull there. And uh, I still got like eight boxes left. So, but I was toying with opening them live or opening them recorded style and then posting them. But they're getting recorded either way. I'm doing it live or I'm, rec I'm recording it in like four box chunks. We'll see. But yeah, for the right price, I actually do like that product. Like, it, like I don't know where it'll go. Like, will it go any lower? If it got to $8 a box, I would buy, I'd, I'd continue to consider buying that because it's, it's really low risk. Dude, it's a great bargain. It's a great bargain. I, I hated that checklist. I really hated that checklist. How about live tonight, Memphis says? I don't want to spoil <laughs> it. I, I, I do it live tonight, but unfortunately, I would say there's already seven videos pre-recorded <laughs> in addition to the two that I posted, so I don't want to spoil those. Uh, I'm going to wait till those are done. So we'll see. Hey, Josh, you've opened up your fair share of 22 Heritage High number two. What do you yes. think about you still buying? I mean, that stuff's still cheap. Um, so I actually bought a lot when it was cheap. So I still have cases left. I have uh, blaster cases. I have hobby cases. Um, I got those from the hobbies for like 40 bucks a box. Um, it's a tough rip to honestly to rip it, I would say. Uh, but for that amount of the value of it when I'm only paying $40 a hobby box and what you can get out of it is insane. I will say, but it's slow going. You get one Chrome card per box. Um, I've been lucky getting about six autos a case so far, the three cases I've done. Um, but getting the, the big hits I've had, I've actually met two and a half cases of those recently is what I've opened. Um, and one gold, and then one black border is all I've gotten as far as the lower hits. But I have gotten a red ink out of all of them, I believe, so far. So it's it's a great product for the value as far as the cheapness of it and what you can get. But it definitely is slow going. Um, I it's if you rip it occasionally, like I, I did that. I've been doing a case uh, where I open one box a week. It's kind of entertaining. Um, I know Striker, he just did a case of that as well. And I, I think it's worth the, the risk. Um, but he's, I said, he's doing a video of, oh, well, instead of spending, you know, this much, even though it's that cheap, what could you buy? Um, but some of those big cards are thousands of dollars. The Bobbies and Julios um, are really expensive. Uh, the Redding Autos, even just the base auto is um, probably about a three to $400 card of Bobby. Julio is probably more. I don't know the prices. Um, but they're cool cards. That's what I, I feel. I what I have learned, basically, going to the national, uh, which is you, you kind of learn what people like um, just by walking around, seeing what, um, watching what people are buying as you're just you know you know kind of people watching. Um, but that's that's why I like it. It I know it's a rough rip. It's not that entertaining a lot of times, like the um, platinum anniversary where you're getting the hits. But it's that potential of those super collectible cards, you know, the blacks, the black uh, chrome, the, the gold chrome, and then the black borders, and then obviously the um, the real one autos or their sweet red ink ones. That's that's the I like that chase aspect of it, pulling one of those huge cards that probably in, if I wouldn't have bought all those cases, I could have bought a red ink auto of uh, Bobby. But I also like the rip. I like to kind of pull my lot of my own cards. I have bot cards, but that's my draw to it. The hope of pulling a Bobby. Haven't done it yet. That's cool. I mean, I I will say I, I give anybody credit for taking the risk on uh, products like that in mass quantities. I mean, 
it's uh, we got K cards in here. He's a he's a guy we had on a couple weeks ago. He talks about you know opening a lot on a budget, sticking to that budget, and uh, and it, it can be tough. I mean, I I know that uh, when I splurged on a case, it it sort of makes me like think, oh, I gotta sell a lot right now. You know, I I need to I need to to be made whole real quick, and so I try to keep it within a reason. So I don't know, I I. I'm, I, you've ripped a lot, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I think, uh, we all have, uh, a desire to pull some great cards. I mean, that, that is fun. No doubt. Yeah. I, I like to rip. I'm, I think that's what, I mean, me and Brett are kind of like, he just like, he has fun of ripping and, um, I don't know. It's just something about it. It's just fun. Having the chase. I need to do more like Brett though and sell a lot of cards. I, I, <laughs> I can't let go of the cards I like, even as like, oh, I should probably sell some of these. I have way too many cards that I'm just kind of keeping instead of selling um, that. I mean, there's a nickel and dime ones I do, but even then I'm not that great at it, but just the big hits. Like, you know, I can't keep everything I should, I need to sell. I know it, but some of it's like hard to sell. I feel, I don't know. I don't gotta, to it. Just wait till Julio has a great season. You'll get a great opportunity to sell a lot of Julio. <laughs> yeah. I get offers on the black Julio. Um, via like Instagram. I've, I've had offers. Uh, I turned down a $3,000 cash offer for that black Julio. I have no idea what the value is to be honest with you. Uh, um, but to me, it's worth a lot. Cause I pulled it. I got, I mean, I, I remember it was the last pack of a jumbo case. I was doing the last box, the last pack on a live. And I pulled it and I graded it came back at 10 at the time. I think it was a pop two to pop four. Now, I don't know. I just, there's that attachment to me. It's like, to me, it's like a $50,000 card. You know, that's not the real value, but to me, it has just extra value. I'm like, I, I don't, I don't want to sell this card for three grand right now. Yeah, and yeah. I believe in Julio too. That's the thing too. I believe in him. And there's also that sentimental aspect of the card collecting that that's, <laughs> if it was a card I bought and I graded it and someone offered me a, a good price or I can make money on it that would be a different story. But the ones I pulled, unfortunately I, I have too much of a t attachment to it. I got to learn to lose a little bit because I can't keep them all um, and continue to rip as much as I rip. That's, I got to learn <laughs> that balance. You got to strike that balance. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's tough. I, I got that addictive part of it where it's just fun to rip. Um, I, I think that's the hard thing about the current market with product. Um, the prices are up. The products aren't as good as they used to be in terms of the polls. You were just talking about heritage. I opened up heritage. I used to love open heritage because it was cheap and the hits would come out of it. Um, somebody mentioned they had some 18 heritage, go back and open some 18 heritage. I mean, I, I can go through and show you pictures from my, from my, <laughs> um, There's 18 from heritage. my camera roll, you know, of some awesome pulls. I mean, I pulled a one-on-one Jose Abreu super fractor from a fat pack from Meyer and a clearance bin. Like dude, there used to be those kind of cards in fat packs. Now you'll be lucky to even see a numbered card in retail. I mean, you've opened a lot of retail, but there's some in there, but not like it used to be you used to find red autographs in retail. It, they are so tough to hit. Yeah, I would say the 22 Heritage High Number Retail, um, I've opened a lot. A lot of loose blasters, excuse me. And I've had actually I've better luck with those because I bought a case I did. And I even did like a, a break where I had some in there. And they were just so horrible. I stopped putting them in the, the little breaks I do. I just honestly just added them for free to the breaks because like the hits out of those were so far and few between. It's not, it wasn't worth it. Like, this, there's no value in that. I, if you buy one, you have a shot at getting huge. One blaster I got from, from Walmart from one of those $17 blasters. I got both the Julio a Venezuela stamp, the Ooh. and the and a chrome one of the chrome cards. Uh, I think the uh, refractor at like 673, and that was one blaster. But the parallels, like the image variations and all those type of cards, are nearly impossible to hit from the blasters if you actually look at the odds which i didn't when i added to one of my breaks and i was like after i was like ah, i kind of cringed i was like yeah so i just i stopped doing those but 
still fun. I mean, if you if you can find a blaster still at Walmart for they were offering for seventeen bucks. I oh would, yeah, if I saw it, I would, I would buy. It. If they asked full price, I'd probably still buy it just because it was there. I'm like, oh, I'll buy this. But yeah, I got a bunch of blasters. Um, John actually sent me a link uh, a long time ago. That's when I bought some of those blaster cases. They were four hundred dollars for a blaster case, so ten dollars a box. And so that's when I bought a couple for myself. Um, and I still have two cases sealed. So that was the update, or the uh, uh, no, no, that that was the heritage high number, ten you bucks a box. Link uh, that they were, yeah. Um, no, I love, yeah. I don't, I don't think you would have sent me the link if you found the uh, twenty-two update for ten dollars a box. <laughs> no, you would have bought that out. Everybody <laughs> would have. I actually, um, the speaking of those, I actually, so I did get lucky on eBay of all places. I got two cases of twenty-two update blasters. Uh, all said, there was seven fifty a piece, so that came out wow. to like eighteen dollars a box. Wow, that's that really was cool. just that was just a couple months ago too. Just some people, someone wow. put it up there, and so I, I still have. I'm, I did the one case, and I have I think twenty four left of the second case where I did one live so far with it. I'll probably do a couple more lives and have fun. Um, and I honestly, I don't know how much more twenty two I'll be able to do. Uh, I think it's going to go up in value in price. So I'm, I think I may be honestly, I may be getting close to tapping out because it's gonna get too expensive to rip a lot of it. So I know it gets to that point of no return. That's incredible. Yeah. Price. Although I still believe that Bobby One One is out there um, to be pulled. It hasn't surfaced anywhere. Uh, I don't want it. I have bad dreams about it sitting somewhere, some <laughs> kid's closet in a shoebox. His grandma got him a box, and you rip it and like. Pfft, didn't care anything about it. And, oh, look at that. It's a gray Bobby Witt. Who's that? And it's probably all mangled. I don't, I don't want to think that's the reality. So it's out that's there. Funny. <laughs> if the, uh, yeah, like I said, if the hair, uh, not heritage, if the uh, 23 update blasters hit 10 bucks a box, I'll probably buy more of them. I, I mean, 10 bucks a box for they're they're averaging one and like one and a quarter hits a box. In terms of numbered cards, they're they're not bad. blowing out of there. I I'll do a recap when I'm done. But man, I I think I got I think I got forty numbered cards already, and I still have eight boxes to go. And yep. I mean, it's it's crazy. Like they're they're just they're better in terms of numbered cards than twenty two update was. Now that the checklist isn't as good, but not even close to as good, but. Those rookie debuts, don't overlook that. Somebody made a comment on that. The rookie debuts, I mean, at Moreno rookie debut, a Volpe rookie debut. I got uh, Corbin Carroll rookie debut. A lot of those came out in a parallel in this case. So, you know, in a numbered card, and it was like, that ain't bad. I'm not going to complain. Hey, I'm, Someone asked I in the comments. More... Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead oh, about the, I said if the Bobby Witt 101 uh, was pulled, what would what would it sell for you think? I, I I'm gonna ask Brett because Brett's probably smarter than I am about that kind of stuff. Man, that's that's a tough one. I mean, I I would think that's somewhere between like just the fifty to hundred thousand bucks. You think so? Still, I do think so. Nah. I, I would have been lower than that personally. I would have probably been somewhere between twenty five to fifty k if you would ask me. Um, Honestly, if I got it, if I got it personally, would um, I think I told some people this? I would actually contact Bobby Witt and see if he wanted to buy it from me, because <laughs> I know he's a collector and hey, he's got money now. Um, and I think this would be cool if I could sell it to him. I, otherwise, I'd have to sell it if I got it. To be honest with you, um, just for financial, that I'd just be if I could get that much money from a card. I, do, I, do I want to keep it? I but I would have to sell it, and I would honestly want to. I'd probably sell the Bobby. That's that would be what I would want to do. So he said the Julio one of one sold for seventy thousand. Brett sold the Wander one of one when it was the perfect time to sell it um, for seventy eight thousand dollars. So I don't think. Bobby would go for near as much. I I would agree. It's probably in that twenty to thirty five thousand dollar range. That's what I would have said. 
But what do I know? I'm no expert. It's, you should probably trust Brad on this one. That's why it's hard to do. Send it. Yeah, send it I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't sell it for cheap. I mean, I would. I would no. probably not take. I mean, I wouldn't just have them like, oh, sure. I mean, it, it would be okay. No, that's I would I wouldn't even consider twenty thousand. Somebody asked me twenty. What if they, Bobby Witt came out with that Bobby Witt collection? What if they took it out of the product and put it in that one and <laughs> be like, oh, we faked you guys out. It's actually not in this product. It's in Bobby's product. You got to go get that one. They could do that. Yeah, maybe that'd be dirty because that been would happy. be so funny though if they did that. <laughs> and be like, oh, psych. It was never in the product. I mean, product. I would then say that they should send that box to me that has it since, uh, you know, I continue opening <laughs> that like it's a job. <laughs> they should send that box to me as as payment or something because they owe me. <laughs> yeah, I had one more question written down to ask you. What's the hobby scene like around Kansas City? How many hobby shops? What's the retail uh, people buying out the shelves. Are you able to find stuff regularly? What's it like in your area? Um, I guess we can start with the retail aspect. Um, I mainly do Walmart because there's a, there's one. I live out in the country and there's a Walmart by me. There's some Targets. Um, I just haven't I got Targets in a while because I was mainly when I was hunting update. I would go to all of them. Obviously, I don't do that anymore, so I'm not I'm not on the hunt as much. So I just mainly hit up a couple of Targets. One by my work um, that I'll go to. And then uh, there, the one in Paola is always well stocked with all kinds of stuff, uh, football, basketball, baseball. Obviously, the, if it's a big product, like one of the basketball, um, like the Prism uh, football that just came out, that sold out real quick. The, Don, the Donneros, it would always sell out real quick. And then there's always the certain products that sit there for a long time, but it's always well stocked. There's a lady that does it. She does a good job. And then a lot of the other Walmarts are kind of meh. And same with the targets there for a while. They're just like they have cards, but there's not uh they don't they're not like that full of cards, but that one in payola is and I love it because it's gets it's restocked all the time. Uh card shop wise, um there's definitely quite a few. Um there's one actually right by my work where I first got started, and it has probably the best selection of sealed wax. Um Almost, I mean, for private rival, some big shop. It's a small shop, but they have all the new stuff. They have stuff, you know, going back years that, um, I mean, not necessarily vintage, but, you know, the last 10 years, especially football, uh, but even older basketball and baseball, they have a lot of stuff there. Um, and anything anything new, they pretty much always have it and, and have in stock. Like, they still have update. They always have update, 22 update. And I'll go by there and they usually have it on, on the counter by it. Uh, there's another place that just opened up that I've been going to. It's called the Albatross and they also do disc golf. Brett would love it. Um, Jake, he, uh, he's a younger guy that had, he started it as a card shop. Then he added disc golf stuff. Um, and he doesn't have the biggest selection of wax, but he also said he has disc golf and he has, but I like the guy I go in there often and buy stuff from him. He'll have, you know, retail as well and then besides that i don't go to many of the others because they're not near me i live so far south but i've been to probably five or six others and every time i've ever gone into one there's always people in it um and i say i think it's definitely i mean i again i can't compare it to anywhere else but it seems alive and well um the shot of uh, the shows i've been going to uh they just been getting bigger and bigger with more people every time I go there. So it does seem like uh, in the last said year and a half I've been in it. The first couple of shows I went to, they weren't, they weren't tiny, but they the tables weren't full. They didn't have, you know, as many tables or as many people, but it's been definitely getting bigger. Um, the last, yeah, the last year, every show I go to, it's more and more crowded. There's, I mean, tables are full. Um, so I think it seems alive and well and growing. So, but I'm not an expert, but that's just, uh, my an anecdotal, uh, view of it. So hmm. I think it's a good time to be in it. I know that the whole COVID thing was huge. I don't know much about that cause I wasn't in it. So I don't know how it ranks compared to that. As far as the growth, obviously that, you know, was kind of a, 
forced growth it seemed like but it does seem like a lot of people are getting into it and it's fun going there the same thing as a national just fun to talk to people that are there there's a few guys that i know now just by going and i don't know their name but they know me i know them i talk to them shake their hand and then um but it's fun to watch people make deals you know especially you know the younger kids you know there that you know the teenager get the boys that have their little box and they pull out these you know twenty thousand dollar cards to try to trade for something else that you know one of the dealers has that's pretty cool uh i think it's alive and well um the the main card shop i go to is definitely always has customers in it uh, helps that they have a lot of product that's awesome. I, I think I think it's got. A, I think there's a future in it. I think hopefully maybe fanatics. Like I said, I'm. I don't really you know bag on anybody or anything for the most part. I mean I'm skeptical of everybody, but. Um, I think I don't know. I think it's. Uh, I think fanatics. I think they have the right mindset going forward. So I think it's not going to help. Uh, bring people in all the you know the marketing that's you know all the stuff they do the social media stuff the kids dig that stuff. Um, so I think it's going to just that kind of stuff is going to help grow the hobby. I mean, I don't know if that's, they've had that effect here in the last year or it's just kind of growing for uh, some other reason. I, I think that's one thing fanatics has done to tops. That's so different. Tops just did status quo year after year, no social media at all, hardly. I mean, at all. And now there's commercials on TV. Uh, they have athletes promoting stuff. It's pretty incredible what Fanatics has done. They're they're spending money to make money, and they brought they have brought in a lot of new people that wouldn't have been, which is cool to see. I just hopefully they continue to think about the product and make it as good as they can. <laughs> That's what I care about the most. Well, I'm not going to disagree. I would say on the new product side, those are all good points. But when it comes to the hobby in general and the sports card hobby, I think one of the things, whether you guys agree or not, you know, we, you, you guys are primarily opening products. You know, that's sort of like the hobby for you. Maybe, maybe not entirely, but, you know, that, that's a large chunk of it. You can always collect the players you like. You can always be a sports fan and have a connection to cardboard and pictures and memories and grading and whatever and autographs and collections. And to me, the popularity of the hobby, whether Fanatics is successful at selling product or not, if they're bringing people in to just share in the experience and you can go back in time, right? To products that already existed that Fanatics had zero connection to. You want to go buy Steph Curry rookies. Fanatics wasn't around when Steph Curry was a rookie. You want to go buy Patrick Mahomes rookies from Panini Prism. Fanatics wasn't around when that was the case. You want to go buy uh, who's your favorite Cub of all time, uh, Brett, when it comes to uh, player Eddie Vedder, that card. Uh, Vedder. <laughs> you know, that Fanatics wasn't around then. You can still enjoy that, even in spite of how bad Fanatics screws up. Whether they screw up or not, they're better than Panini for now. I'll be a little skeptical. I'll trust, but verify. Um, but I will say if you're into collecting it for the purposes of the memories and the, and the connection to your favorite sports stars of all time, you can do that regardless of how much marketing there is out there. You don't need the marketing to do that. Just do it because you feel like you get fulfillment and enjoyment out of that. So for me, hopefully, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm really just trying to, to find a way to, not be so focused on the negative, but focused on, and not hobby positivity, but just positivity in terms of why do I even do it? I do it because I, because I collect the players I like. I like watching them. I've loved watching them. You know, years from now, Steph Curry will be retired. I, I just like that memory of like, remember when he broke the three point record? Remember when he won his first title? There'll be connections there. And, and to me, that's what makes it fun. And hopefully more people will find that level of excitement in it, not always about the chase. So take it or leave it. It's my opinion for what it's worth. Yeah, that's why I think Fanatics comes in where like, you still have to get people into the hobby to really, I mean, I think that's what it will help. will bring those people in and then if you know, they can then 
find their way in the hobby, but you got to bring them in somehow. And with today's world, social media is how you're going to bring in a lot of those new people, you know, with all the advertising, you know, as they're watching it, oh, they see that and then, oh, they get into it. So I think that, I, I think that's why it's good, you know, to be able to get more people into it. Uh, Cause if there's less people into, it, I guess, then it's, I don't know how that would work. You know, then like, does the product get cheaper or does it get more expensive? Cause well, I, I think they, they, pro- that's a great question. Product print runs would probably go down, which could be good. Prices yeah. will probably remain high, but then you'll see deals after the fact, like release prices will be the way they are. The other thing would be secondary market prices would be dirt cheap to collect your favorite players. And so if you're in it to collect your favorite players or have your favorite players, rookie cards or the all time great rookie cards and you're getting great deals on them, then that ain't, that ain't a bad thing either. Yeah. <laughs> Cause that next right. wave up will always happen. Whether it's in yeah, this and, or that. And to the hobby. I, I mean, again, I'm new, but I I've seen enough of it as far as, you know, watching and, you know, been to all the car shops, the shows, the national, I think you kind of need everybody. I mean, you need, honestly, you kind of need the breakers because you got to have product out there. You got to get product getting ripped. Um, because if you, and people like Brett, who's just ripping and ripping. I, I like to rip a lot um, because then you get those singles out there um, for people to be able to buy. Um, cause it probably, if there wasn't as much rip, I guess it'd all be still in sealed boxes. A lot of the hits. My so hobby shop be harder for people to collect those cards. So I don't know. I think you, we, you need all stripes. Uh, it takes that. I mean, and especially as it's growing, that's just my, my opinion, getting into it. Um, just more, just as a, just straight looking at it from a, a kind of almost outside perspective kind of coming into it. Um, I'm not against any part of it. Obviously, you know, if there's shady deals going on, that's, that's another story, but um and I get there's the gambling aspect. The whole lot of the hobby is gambling, and I think that's what a lot of people don't. What they say about breakers. Um, I I don't. I mean, like Brett. I think I think he should have had an influencer card personally because he's an actual guy just open cards, having fun. Where there's a lot, of, you know, the big breakers. I don't consider striker big breaker. I you know I figure all those like big, um, the big time breakers. You know, like I do football and basketball and all the whatnot and all that stuff. Um, I don't, I don't negative against it, but I think they're kind of, you know, more the, not in a bad way, but I think of them like as like the breaker mill with the puppy mills, but not necessarily negative, but just that <laughs> the amount of quantity they do. Um, obviously it rubs a lot of people the wrong way. Cause you see them get a lot of hits, but that's just a numbers game when they're opening that much product, you're yeah. bound to get the hits. Obviously. I mean, could there be conspiracy that are true where they're getting boxes from Panini. I don't know. I don't also honestly care, but I just think, I don't know. It's, I find it all interesting and obviously negativity sells as well, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it's, you got to have it all. You got to have fun. I love it. My, my hobby shop owner, I think described it best. The whole card collecting community would not exist without each other. You, if you're a singles buyer, you need dudes like us opening products because if we don't open them, there's no singles to buy. There are no Julio or Bobby rookie cards to buy because they're sitting in boxes because there's lots of people who don't open any product at all. And hobby shop owners, they need singles as well. Most of them don't open their own product. They're buying in bulk from all over the place. Um, it, it's, with a, it's a whole the whole hobby is just this big circle of people from card graders to buyers to openers to breakers and we all have choices at the end of the day and i've tried to do my best to open stuff that actually has long term value that's worth opening that gets some excitement going i've kind of learned that through the years of like I used to love Gypsy Queen. I wish they still made Gypsy Queen myself. They got rid of it. I like Gypsy Queen. But, you know, like anything Sapphire, it's worth opening. I don't care what it is. Every one of the Sapphire releases, Bowman's and the Tops, they're just, they're just, that's what people are really interested in, you know. But it's just getting more expensive. That's the one thing that really sucks. And is it's, you got choices though, you know? Yeah. 
I will say, you you know, a lot of a lot of comments said this. You need all all of those facets to be working to make the whole thing work. But you also need sports fans to be fans of cards, fans of cardboard, fans of autographs, fans of collections, memorabilia, whatever, to make it work too. And so hopefully that will happen with Fanatics marketing. I'm not saying that uh, that that'll help everything, but you know, they're, I really, you know, one thing we, we could probably spend a whole episode on this, Brett, but when do the licenses actually take over for basketball and for football? I think it's 2026. I am very curious to see what happens with the product releases then. I mean, are we going to see a flagship tops product? And, you know, what, what level of products are we going to see? Are we going to see any Panini carryover of brands that get brought in? Or is it just going to start over with tops and tops Chrome and Sapphire and all the tops branded products under the Fanatics umbrella? I'm very, very curious. See new products for that matter that, that will, we haven't seen yet. Uh, that we'll see once that happens. I I hope they never discontinue like Optic. I actually do like the way some of those look from like the 2017, 2018 timeframe. I actually like the way Optic looks. I'm glad they had that in like 2016. I would hate to see that go away completely. The Mahomes rookie's iconic in Optic. You know, to me, it looks better than the Prism card. But I'm very curious to see what happens in in a couple years with football and basketball. And I'd love to open some basketball for a low, low cost. I really would. Yeah, yeah, no. I hate not yeah. opening back. I love you. I know you don't watch the NBA, Josh, and, and Brett probably doesn't eat much either, but I'm an NBA guy. I, I you know, I, they have their faults. Fair enough. But I love basketball. I live in the state that, that breathes basketball. We, we, it, it's a big deal here in Indiana. If you haven't noticed. <laughs> basketball's big here so i i just love watching the game whether it's the nba the college whatever high school i don't care i love watching the game of basketball it's a fun game to watch so i can't wait for that to happen i'm very curious i'll remain curious and hopefully they do it right that would be awesome i that, that's a whole nother episode we can go on forever but we can go on. We should, we should, it's, you know, yeah. it's long overdue to, to circle back on that. I think we need yeah. to do that. Write that down. We'll, we'll put a segment together, but man, Casey car connection, Josh coming on. We've been on a long time. I know he's got to go to work tonight. So we got to go to work. Yeah. I, I got my second shift of the day. I started today at five 30. I get a little break about eight hours and I got to go back. So <laughs> Yeah, well, that's a, that's a life of that's a life of controller. It's a short short work week, and then you get about three days off if you work a mid once a week. It's but it's life. Now, you're what, used to it, sort of. I was going to ask as well when it comes to being a controller. I've heard that the shelf life on a controller they make you guys retire pretty early, right? Yeah, it's a mandatory retirement at fifty six. Uh, and then there's other rules where you actually retire earlier. Uh, if you have 25, it's called good time. It's uh, being a controller. You can retire at any time. So I got some guys I work with that started young and they can retire uh, with full benefits about, you know, I, I think one of them is at like 47. He can retire. Um, I'll be able to retire at 50. I'm getting up there. Um, so I have about six years left. And I'll be able to retire wow. at 50. So I'll have enough years. Um, don't know what I'll be doing if I'm real because it's young I and mean, it's fairly young, 50 in today's world. Um, to open a card job. Well, I, but... I know what you should be doing. <laughs> Full time breaker. Uh, I don't, um, you know, I think I would kind of like that, but I, I don't know. I'm not organized enough. I like doing the breaks just because I like to rip. That's kind of why I did it. And I was, it does help a little bit with the financial, but sometimes, honestly, I, I give too much away. You know, during a break, I'll add extra boxes and any kind of profit I would have had, I lose. Um, <laughs> I definitely can see how you can make money. And you, if you, you almost have to make money to want to do that because it is so much time um, to do a break. Uh, it's many hours. I mean, try to do one break, you're spending at least 10 hours of your time, if not more. And that's not even that's not even including the break itself. Um and then obviously the upfront cost. Uh, it's fun doing it. I don't know that I'll ever be a full time breaker like that. I'll probably continue doing more PC rips. I'd like to get into more just talking about cards, learning, you know, 
doing these kind of things with you guys is kind of fun. Um, just to talking about it as well. Um, but yeah, I like it though. Cause it's just another way to rip. It doesn't cost me anything. That's the best thing about it. And it's fun. I, I if I get a huge hit, I I'm waiting. I want to, I haven't pulled a super refractor yet. I want it to be during a break for somebody else. Um, that would be fun. I pulled a plenty of one on ones, but never super factor. Seemed like that's like for baseball, the ultimate one on one is a super factor. Um, besides the Bobby one on one, of course. I'm that's why people always joke that I don't break, which is true. It's not even a joke, it's true. I don't break 22 update in any of my breaks because I couldn't, if I pulled that one on one, well, break, should, I'd cry you, on, you on should, screen. You should do what uh, uh, Restless Craft does. He does every single break he does. He keeps the Giants. The Giants are not for sale. And everybody knows yeah, that. Yeah. Like everybody yeah. knows that. So. Yeah. I, I've seen that. I've been on a step where people keep, yeah, they keep their own spots because, you know, especially smaller breakers, they don't fill all the spots. So they'll keep some spots. That would be an interesting way of doing it. But I don't know. That would just. It's. To me, I'd just rather just do it, and that's why I don't even include it because I. So the funny story is, is actually I did include Tops Update, one of my personal boxes, and I, when we started the breaks, I would buy some stuff for the breaks, and like I'll throw in one of these. It was a twenty-two jumbo, and Mark was here earlier. I pulled him the, um, what was it the Reverence Patch Auto of Julio Rodriguez, the red parallel out of five. Wow. And that was my personal box that I was like, I'll just throw this in here from a case I had bought. And I don't ever, I don't ever include personal boxes anymore. Um, I kind of keep them separated. (laughs) If I buy stuff for a break, I may rip it personally, but normally I keep those aside. Um, And so that I learned my lesson there just because it, you know, I'm, I got my certain guys I'm collecting and that was rough to pull that from just because it was from, I, I mean, I was glad to pull it for the guy um, for Mark, but it was more, uh, there's Mark right there. He's here. Um, which he's still waiting for that to be redeemed that uh, from 22, one of the, the top autos you can get from that product is still oh, wow. waiting to be redeemed, uh, which is kind of insane. Um, that is crazy. That Do is. you think they'd have that by now? I'd be cool. think so. Yeah, I don't know what the deal is. You think? Um, yeah, it's odd. I don't know. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Well, we can wrap it up, Brett. I know Josh has to get to work eventually, but uh, we don't want to. We don't want to make you late. So, unless uh, you have any other parting thoughts, I think we have. Uh, no, <laughs> nope. Um, no, I, I've been looking forward to this for a long time. Come on, it's fun. I, I watch you guys all every week. Um, and so it's kind of, kind of nerve wracking coming on, you know, I'm just, a, I'm just a dude. And you know, and you see people come on here, it's kind of fun to watch. And you know, like when Peds came on here, Striker's been on here and other guys, it's uh, so it's kind of cool, you know, but it's just kind of full of cool. Just guys chatting about cards, having fun. So uh, we're just dudes hanging out, following yeah. cards of men. That's all we do. <laughs> yeah. Can't get much better than that. <laughs> uh. Well, we appreciate you coming on. Uh, the chat was going was awesome tonight. One of the better chats. We had a good crowd. So, hope you guys enjoy it. Make sure you're checking out KC Car Connection and ERB Sports. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of the weekend. Don't forget about that time change. Stay clock forward. Remember. Until next time. Peace. See ya.